Hi, I'm Keith Ghostland. I'm Ann Charles. I'm Linda Kremlin. Um, this is Tuesday, October 6th, and we're taping in Montpelier, Vermont, which is unceded indigenous land. So now you'd like some headlines, wouldn't you? I would. And maybe so, a trivia question? Well, do we have one? Yes, we do. Okay, so why don't you get us started? And out in the mountains, October 1986, front page news. The Vermont Republican Party at their annual meeting, they did something to their platform. What was it? And remember, it's the Vermont Republican Party. So for some headlines coming out of Canada and going into the Canadian Parliament, they have reintroduced a bill that would impose a ban on the use of conversion <coughs> therapy. My cons and they are reintroducing it. It was a bill that had been originally slated in March, but because of COVID, you know, it, the process got derailed, needed to be reintroduced as they're starting their session over again. And one of my concerns is, you know, what, what we're seeing frequently with conversion therapy bills. The bill does not apply to those seeking guidance and support from counselors or faith leaders. Oh. So that there is this religious exemption that seems to be put in place. Mm. So, but with minors, you can't do it, period. Mm. So it, it would need to be an adult approaching a community of faith saying, please do this for me. The other piece coming out of Canada is Seja Bour uh, um, Francois Arnand, who played Cesar <coughs> Borgia in the Showtime <coughs> series, he came out as bisexual. And he did it just before September 23rd, which was, and I didn't realize it, International Bisexual Visibility Day. <coughs> which kind of indicates, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of promotion from within our communities. No. We still may have a lot of work to do. And here, here was one of his statements, because when he was talking about it, you know, he was talking about how much narrative do you give? Sort of how much backstory? And he said this, silence has the perverse effect of perpetuating those stereotypes, making by guys invisible and leading people to doubt that we even exist. So he said when he would talk about an ex-girlfriend, there was this presumption that of course, and that he needed to add this to that narrative so that people got it. Yeah. That so, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the upcoming election. Uh -huh. oh, I'm, going to go, I'm actually going to go down through the list of LGBTQ plus candidates. And both. we have a few. We have 14. Oh, that's amazing. And it, and it keeps growing. But here's one of the things I want to mention to people. You all should have gotten your mail-in ballots by now. If you haven't, you need to get in touch with the town clerk and say, where is it? I said mine today. And did you sign up? Yep. Thank you. Per Jim Condos, the Secretary of State, please, if you're mailing them back in, get them into the mail on or before October 24th, which is a week before Election Day, to ensure it <coughs> has time to get there. Because in Vermont, it needs to be received on or before Election Day. If it's received after, it doesn't count. Um, this is Medicare Open Enrollment Day from October 15th to December 7th. This is changing your Medicare coverage, you know, those supplemental plans, if you didn't sign in for Medicare B. But this is also the ACA Obamacare Open Enrollment wow. from November 1st to December 15th. And until the Supreme Court hears the challenge, Obamacare is still the law, law of the land. You are entitled to health insurance. The census, the census, and it will make Linda happy, will continue until October 31st for per federal appeals court ruling. 
Boy Scouts of America, they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. If you are somebody who is abused in the Scouts, you have only until November 16th to file a claim. And that means you need to, to go out and find one of the law agencies handling these cases to have your claim submitted. Let me ask you, with the, when they go bankrupt, does that mean that the organization dissolves or it goes bankrupt and just keeps going? It, it means that they're relieved of their financial debt. Uh -huh. So if you or somebody who was victimized in the Scouts being included in the suit, whatever assets they have, you're entitled to, okay. or you're entitled to a portion of. You know, anything filed after that bankruptcy, they have no more money, they have no more resources, you're not gonna get anything. Sunday, October 11th is National Coming Out Day. What do you have planned for your next step in coming out? October, it's a busy month. It is LGBTQ plus history month. Yes, and I would like to add, if I may, that um, a very important project that has been conducted by historian and archivist Eric Marcus has just started its eighth season. So it's called Making Gay History. You can go online and find um, seven seasons of interviews with very important historical figures. They're audio interviews. And um, in the eighth season, he's been able to collaborate with the Studs Terkel archives. So he's got, the lineup is really exciting, Lorraine Hansberry. Um, and the first episode is available, and I watch, I listen to it, and it's with Christopher Isherwood. It was fabulous. His, his memoir, it was 1976, I think, his memoir, Christopher and His Kind had just come out, and he was talking about all of it, Berlin in the 30s. And so Eric Marcus is really a trailblazer, and he's been doing Making Gay History podcasts for years, so tune in. You'll really, um, in the past, I've listened to Barbara Smith and... Um, Morty Manfred, an early gay activist, and you know, so please tune in. And for more of a sort of local, you might go on to the Pride Center site and look for access to the panel discussion following all we've got about disappearing women's space. Mm -hmm. And you might see a familiar face. October is also Hispanic Heritage Month. October is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And looking at the Pride Center site, Safe Space is one of the sponsors for a vigil and speak out on October 29th. However, what I did not see on the listing on the site currently is if this is an in-person event, and if so, where, mm -hmm. or if it's a virtual event and how one could participate. So, so now you're gonna take me to strange and exotic places. Um. I feel like the pendulum has swung back quite a bit in the last two weeks in terms of transgender rights in England. You may recall I gave a glowing, optimistic... Of that big, you know, pride thing they had right there in England. No, the, um, that was something, but um, the account of transgender rights and movements toward uh, education and so forth. And uh, there was a fierce debate about the Gender Recognition Act that was inaugurated under Margaret Thatcher and it was being revised. So there's bad news from there uh, that I will report on. Um, government, um, okay. On the ground in Poland, I have several Polish stories that are discouraging. Um, more bad news, a journalist who condemned anti-LGBT violence and corruption in Honduras has been murdered. His name is Luis Almendares. I have a picture oh. of him for you to see now. 
the Egypt police are arbitrarily arresting, torturing, L and torturing LGBTQ people. This is a new report from Human Rights Watch. Um, the Berlin patient, Timothy Ray Brown, dies at 54. He was um, originally cured of AIDS, but then died of leukemia. Um, so that's very sad news. There are more uh, encouraging stories as follows. Japan Airlines gets rid of ladies and gentlemen for gender neutral greetings. And I have more information about that that's very cheery. My favorite story maybe of the episode is that France, and it's not particularly LGBTQ related, but France is going to ban the use of wild animals in circuses and marine yes. parks. That's I'll good. expatiate about that in one of my segments because that's fabulous news. It's about time. Um, I'd like to show you a picture now of Uruguay where thousands of people are marching for LGBT rights. So you see the picture there and the uh, much of the article explains how socially distanced and masked the um, marchers were, but this picture doesn't seem to reflect that. So my thinking is, even though they, um, the news source says this is the picture of the march, I think it might be some other picture <laughs> of a Uruguayan march, because I don't see too many masks and no do social distancing here. Uh, apropos of pride, the first pride march was held in Zaporozhye, Ukraine. Um, there were 500 people who marched and 750 police officers <laughs> and National Guard members there to protect them. So no one was injured, presumably. And uh, my last picture is of the first transgender deputy prime minister from Belgium. Um, her name is Petra D. Sutter, and she's a candidate of the Green Party and this is a good breakthrough in Belgium. So I have more um, matters to discuss in greater detail, but now let's turn to Linda. Hi, we have the national news. Well, at least some of it. Members of the LGBT community have been making Proud Boys trend on social media. Mm -hmm. Shepard Smith, a gay journalist, talks about life after <clears throat> Fox News. Trans new this is a, a, a sad story, again, from Puerto Rico. Um, a trans nursing student, student, Michelle Ramos Vegas, shot to death in Puerto Rico. Her death makes the sixth known victim in Puerto Rico. And the 30th this year in the United States, she was 33 years old. Her body was found by the side of the road in the town of St. Germain. She was shot three times in the head. Um, you know, this has just got to stop. Uh, and then Rachel Maddow was roasted for tweeting, God bless the president. Her sympathetic reaction asking her followers to pray uh, for Trump, who just mocked Joe Biden for wearing a mask, caused outrage. I was a little outraged. I watched the episode. It was uh -huh. very jarring to hear that. An anti-LGBTQ alliance defending freedom has filed two suits in Virginia. A 24-year-old man was dancing with a female friend for a TikTok video in Lower Manhattan when an unknown assailant called him a homophobic slur and punched him repeatedly in the head. New fest to feature an all-trans reading of Brokeback Mountain. We'll have more about that. Republican Super PAC runs a ad uh, calling a gay candidate creepy. This is very exciting. Viola Davis just woos as lesbian blue singer Ma Rainey. And I cannot wait to see that. We'll have more information about that. Legendary I Am Woman singer Helen Reddy has died. Was she a lesbian? No, but, okay. you know, I am woman. You know, it deserves a... Mention. Yes, certainly. everybody sings it all the time. That's a good one for the show. 
Um, <laughs> a gay musician was kicked out of church, has been flooded with supportive messages, only named as Gabriel, was a member of his church music group and played <clears throat> weekly services, was told to leave when he was found wearing gay pride gear. On Fox News, Pete Buttigieg lays into Mike Pence ahead of the BP debate. He said, you have in Pence a professional Christian who is going to have to defend the character of a president who sent hush money to porn stars. Lesbian cop sues her bosses, claiming white discrimination. Atlanta Out on Film LGBTQ Festival offers queer bold cinema. We'll have more about that. Phoenix mayoral candidate Marissa Hamilton has an anti has anti LGBTQ comments on Facebook, which were very hateful, and she should be disqualified from running. She is parroting far right conspiracy theories by QAnon. U.S. Supreme Court will not hear Kim Davis, who uh, she was the person in Kentucky who refused to give. Um, Marriage license. A marriage license to gay couples. Lambda Legal asserts that marriage equality is at risk, and we'll have more about that. Sirana Santiago, a Puerto Rican LGBTQ icon, has died at 73. And last for the headlines is Boys Town name change in Chicago gets mixed reactions from residents but will now be known as North Halstead. The name Boys Town has been in use since the 1980s. <coughs> so are you going to watch Netflix production of Boys in the Band? You I've know, heard good things about yeah, it. Yeah, I did too. I'm I not, did too. Are is you? that on now or is it coming on? <laughs> it's. I didn't see a release date. I just saw the promo saying right. it was coming. Um, I will probably watch it. Yeah, I saw someone who so, so it's available in some Netflix. venue because yeah. I saw someone reported on it. Yeah, that it was good. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the elections, and I'm going to combine two segments into one. So I may fe seem windy to you all. I'm going to go down through the individual races, and you know the first one I'm going to talk about is Kathleen James. She's running for a House seat, Bennington Four. She is an incumbent. This is a two-seat district, and both she and the other incumbent are seeking re-election. So, but she does have opposition. Mm -hmm. Stiff opposition? Not living in the area, I can't tell you. When I've talked with some of these candidates, one of the things that they've said is, this is somebody who has run before, or this is somebody who is known within the community. Okay. So, I mean, it's like Bill Lippert. You know, he had a difficult primary. You know, he is running, I need to find him really quickly, in Chittenden 4 2. It's a one seat district, and the person who is running against him is a Republican who has run against him in several previous elections. So, it's somebody that has name recognition, has growing support within the community. So, so it's really difficult to gauge exactly what does that mean. Mm -hmm. Okay, then there's Ember Quinn, who is the Chittenden 10 district. She is not an incumbent. This is a two-seat district, and unfortunately, both of the current Republican incumbents are seeking re-election, and this has been a traditionally Republican district. So, Ember could use your support. In Milton. No, well, that's Chittenden 10. People who live in that no. district will, will recognize that. But it might be useful for the general audience to know. <laughs> the other is Emma Mulvey Stanick, which is a house seat, Chittenden 6 2. This is part of Burlington. She is not an incumbent. This is a one seat district. She has no opposition. And in the primary, she did defeated the long-term Democratic incumbent. Uh -huh. so, and then Brian Sheena, who is an incumbent, Chittenden 6-4, two-seat district. Both he and his other progressive Democratic incumbent are seeking re-election. They have no opposition. 
Tiff Blumel, who I know you will be telling us the correct pronunciation at some point, but Tiff is not an incumbent. This is a two-seat district. There is opposition, but this is also an open two-seat district, historically Democratic. Both of the Democratic incumbents who were long-term legislators both chose not to seek re-election this year. Oh. So this will be an interesting one to watch. Who's your opponent, do you know? Not off the top Sorry. of my No, there, there are two Democrats and two Republicans and an independent oh, okay. in this race. Oh, okay. And none of them had right. strong name recognition for me. Okay. So this is truly an open seat election. Taylor Small. <laughs> Chittenton 6 7, this is Winooski. Taylor is not an incumbent. This is a two seat district. Taylor and Hal Colston, who is the other uh, Democratic incumbent, are seeking election. There is an independent candidate. Jim Ellers, right? Exactly. And people are seeing it as being only a marginal campaign because Jim is also running in several other places. <laughs> yes. So. John Kalaki, Chittenton 7-3. This is a one-seat district. He is an incumbent. He has no opposition, and we adore John. David Glidden, this is Franklin 3-1. This is St. Albans City. He is not an incumbent. It's a two-seat district, and, current, and both of the current incumbents are seeking re-election. One is Democratic. One is Republican. Oh. And sometimes what happens in Vermont communities of a fairly large population, they may split their vote. It's like if you look at the Caledonia Senate, you know, there is Jane Kitchell, who is a Democrat, and Joe Benning, who is a Republican, and they share the district. However, one of the things that we have also seen is if you have two strong candidates with good name recognition, you could flip a district. Oh. So we're going to be watching what happens with David, and who's Saint known Arvins to the community. Is, it tends to be a, a kind of a conservative area, isn't it? It, it Historically, it has been a split different yeah. district. Kathy Keenan was a representative for here for years, and she was a strong progressive Democrat. Oh, okay. So. There, there are two very strong political perspectives, and they seem to both be represented. So we'll see what happens. The other is Kate Donnelly, who is Lamoille too. This is the Hyde Park area. Mm -hmm. She is not an incumbent. It is a two-seat district. There is opposition, and one of the Democratic incumbents is seeking re-election. One isn't. So this has been you know, a Democratic held area. Emily Kornheiser in uh, Wyndham 2-1. This is Brattleboro. It's a one-seat district. She does have opposition. So, but Emily right now has been doing a lot of work within the community, particularly outreach to women low income. So her name recognition has been growing over the past year. And then there is Heather Supernot. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Windsor 4-1. This is Barnard Pumphrey area. She is not an incumbent. It is a one-seat district. She does have opposition. The Democratic incumbent chose not to see re-election. One of the things about Heather that might get her a bit more traction, because her Republican opponent is known within the community, when elected, Heather will be one of the few farmers huh. serving in the legislature. And then on the Senate side, we have Brian Campion, who is running out of Bennington. He is an incumbent. Um, it's a two-seat district, and both he and his Democratic seatmate are seeking re-election. They do have opposition. And Becca Ballant, you know, out of Wyndham County, Two-seat district, both Democrats are seeking re-election. There is opposition. When elected, 
there is a very good chance Becca will be the first woman and out lesbian president pro tem of the well, Vermont great, Senate. Great, isn't that? And as I made some brief references, our next upcoming interview show on October 17th, we may be interviewing three of these first time candidates for the House. So, stay why? tuned. Exactly. So, with that, okay, let's go to um, Poland. No. <laughs> I think no. we're going to the UK first. Maybe. Well, we're going to the world first. Um, in actually, the UN member state world, uh, in which 13 states um, have are still criminalizing uh -huh. transgender existence. Nigeria, Oman, and Lebanon are among the nations with explicit anti-trans laws, according to the latest review by. Um, an LGBT rights group that monitors such things. Um, others, even though 13 people explicitly uh, make it illegal, others use morality and indecency laws to crack down on the trans community. Um, the research that was revealed in this report details trans legislation and policies in 143 UN member states and 19 other jurisdictions. Many other countries apply seemingly innocuous regulations covering offenses such as public nuisance, indecency, morality, and loitering to police trans communities, according to this report. The upside is that 96 UN member states now have provisions for legal gender recognition. Some of the more shining nations when it comes to legal gender recognition are based in the global south, such as Argentina. Eight years ago, as we know, or we may not know, but now we'll know, Argentina joined a handful of countries that let trans people change their gender on official identity documents without physical or psychological tests. Now we're, we'll get to that in more uh, detail momentarily. Uh, the report also highlighted some positive developments for trans people over the last two years. Nine countries have taken steps to make it easier for people to change their name and gender classification on official documents such as birth certificates since 2018. Now 25 nations with more to follow show us a better example of how to respect the basic human rights of trans and gender diverse people, this report concluded. Contrary to this, um, it really is a positive trend. I mean, the headline was glaring and frightening, but um, on balance in the world, things are looking up, except in the UK. Um, as I said in the intro, in 2004, the UK, under the Thatcher government, the UK established the Gender Recognition Act. And they decided to revise it in 2015 under the leadership of this um, woman uh, equalities minister, Liz Truss. And she was viewed, when she appeared, she was viewed by great, with great suspicion by the LGBT community, and rightly so. So now, um, as a result of this reevaluation of the Gender Recognition Act, they've come up with some recommendations that are just really political. Um, proposals under Theresa May, I'm sorry, did I say Margaret Thatcher? I meant Theresa May in 2004. Oh, oh mea culpa. OK, well, now I've got it right. And please, um, what's Entire, Entirely different hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, Theresa May wanted people to self-identify by their chosen gen gender by signing a statutory declaration without having to provide evidence of a medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria. Um, they suggested that. Another suggestion 
that was on the table was to overturn. You have to, according to the current law, you have to live in your cho your gender um, that you want to have affirmed for two years. And so these are draconian provisions. Um, two years ago, this consultation was um, launched and people um, responded with great uh, enthusiasm toward loosening these um, rules about a medical diagnosis and two years in your gender identity and so forth. Um, however, they have decided to drop all those suggestions. And in the, um, the decision, the, this Liz Truss says that she wants to lower the price for um, gender affirmation surgery and she wants to, um, oh, I'm sorry, the cost of trans people to, to change their birth certificates is going to be lowered. It was $180. And she's also going to cut down the lines for gender affirmation surgery. And she's presenting this as a balanced outcome. But um, trans, you know, LGBTQ people are really outraged, describing it as a failure of leadership. Countries including Ireland, Portugal, Norway, and Argentina have a self-ID, allowing trans people to legally change gender by a, a legal declaration and without doctor's involvement. There was popular support for this. Almost two-thirds of the 102,000 respondents said they backed removing the requirement for a diagnosis of gender dysphoria. Um, more than three quarters said they supported scrapping the need for trans people to say they've lived in their gender for a specific time period. Um, in the, they also, the opponents, including, I hate to say it, J.K. Rowling, um, and in fact, there was turmoil about this, and 200 people, writers and publicists, signed a condemnation of J.K. Rowling's, Rowling's anti-trans position. Um, did I say they, they, all right, a con, right, a condemnation, and the only <laughs> writer I recognized was Jeanette Winterson. There were 80 people who supported the transphobic position, and the only person I recognized here is Tom Stoppard. So that makes me kind of sick because I love his plays. But so there's been ferment in the UK. Um, and the trans opponents say that um, they're concerned about the privacy and fairness when it came to trans people accessing women only areas. But in the United States, women's rights groups said that in 2016, 200 municipalities that allowed trans people to use rape crisis facilities in domestic violence shelters saw no rise in sexual violence or public safety issues as a result. So um, some people are just happy it's over, but it's, uh, it's a bad outcome. Similarly, I, uh, last week, last meeting, I reported good news about LGBT instructions being mandated in the schools, mm -hmm. uh, but now uh, the government has issued gender identity guidance for teachers in England. They shouldn't tell children that they might be a different gender based on their personality or the clothes they wear, um, which um, the guidance published on Thursday notes that teachers in England must not reinforce harmful stereotypes. Well, I mm -hmm. could get behind that. And resources used to discuss topics involving gender and biological sex should be age appropriate and evidence based. Um, we are aware that topics involving gender and biological sex can be complex <coughs> and sensitive matters to navigate. Um, 
The problem here is schools have been discouraged from working with organizations that produce materials suggesting that uh, nonconformity to gender stereotypes should be seen as anonymous with having a different transgender identity. And this is a creepy provision because it evokes the transphobic canard that there's pressure for people to transition. And, you know, the, this uh, hoax has been perpetuated widely in the United States, particularly by um, this best-selling book called Tomboy that's getting a lot of play in the national media, saying my daughter's not trans, she's a tomboy, suggesting that there's pressure to transition if you aren't gender conforming, which is uh, a veiled transgender, anti-transgender message, if you ask me. Um, in a statement about all this guidance for the schools, uh, Mermaid, a charity that supports transgender children, said it isn't for any adult to tell a child or young person what their gender identity is. In fact, all too often we see damage done when grown-ups try to force children and young people to be something they're not, either um, non-trans, trans, non-binary. Um, so it's a failure of leadership and the implementation of, this, um, of these educational guidelines is kind of muddled. Um, there's a campaign group called Transgender Trend, um, which is transphobic and is very glad that this guidance has been issued. Um, Stonewall is a very prominent LGBTQ charity and activist group, but uh, teachers have been advised not to consult Stonewall when they're um, planning their curricula. So um, mixed message from the UK, even though um, I was very rosy last time, and I mixed up Margaret Thatcher and Theresa May. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> well, they were both concerned. <laughs> yeah, Walt Whitman used to say, the words of my book, nothing, the drift of it, everything. So that's the story from the UK. Now I can go on to Poland. Well, I think you want to do that the second segment? or Fine, okay. that's fine. Um, so this is kind of... Uh, Members of the LGBT community have been making Proud Boys trend on social media by posting images of gay pride and pictures of themselves with loved ones. The trend is an, is an effort to shut down posts of a far-right group who is anti-LGBTQ and anti-immigrant, among other charming things. The Proud Boys, however, deny that they are an anti-gay group, so. Okay. They're just racist. Yeah. yeah. Thugs. <laughs> Shepard Smith, a gay journalist, talks about life after Fox News and what warms his little gay heart is um, now that he is working for CNBC. Before he left Fox last year, he often didn't get any support from his employers, surprise, <laughs> because he wasn't coddling Trump. He bumped heads with his Fox bosses and colleagues. Even the president turned on him for telling his audience the truth. So, good luck to you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Anti-LGBT Alliance Defending Freedom has filed two lawsuits on behalf of clients who say that Virginia's new inclusive civil rights law infringes on their religious liberty and freedom of speech. The Virginia uh, Values Act took, to, took effect on July 1st and bans discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. And New Fest to feature an all trans reading of Brokeback Mountain. The event will be live streamed and free on October 18th with donations suggested to benefit New Fest 
and the New York City anti -LG, uh, the New York City anti LGBTQ violence project. They are, and I have a picture of these uh, four um, actors who are uh, in this um, production. Greeting. Leo Shang, Ian Richards, Alexander Gray, and Brian Mitchell Smith. So I think that would be interesting to see. I'm on the New Fest mailing list. Good. And a, Mi a Michigan lawmaker and rising star in the Democratic Party who is running for Congress in one of the nation's most contested seats discussed drug use and sex in a now-deleted blog where he also published derogatory comments about women and creepy remarks about children in underwear. However, John Hoadley is seeking the Democratic nomination in Michigan's congressional district and was last week endorsed by Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, the official campaign arm of the Democratic, of the Democratic Campaign Committee, the official campaign arm of the Democrats in the House of Representatives. An up-and-comer in the party, Hoadley has been endorsed by Vice President, hopeful Senator Kamala Harris, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, and Firebrand Squad member Representative Rashida Tiab. Talib, but so he's a homo, he's anti-woman and homophobic? No, I'm getting to it. Okay, because I'm very confused well, right now. This is what he's being accused of by the Republicans. Oh, okay. He had these blogs when he was in college. Anti-woman. You know, they said it was anti-woman. He, he, what he said was he, he mentioned the word breeders. Well, you know, that was considered by the Republicans <coughs> to be an anti-woman. Um, <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> they, want, they may want to check source on that one. I know. <laughs> Um, you know, he, he used the term breeder. Um, you know, it's all, it's all kind of ginned up. I mean, you know, he maybe said a few things in college that were borderline, you know, but it was a long time ago. Well, you know, 10 huh. or 15 years ago. Anyway. But what did he say? There were breeders? Well, he said something about people, uh, uh, let me see, the Green New Deal was a progressive campaign committee along with Senate. Oh, so this was just who he was, um. Uh, yeah, he, he said something about little girls in underwear who were doing this, like, fashion show thing. So they called him a pedophile. Oh, I see. Um, he, he they called, called him creepy. Yeah, they called him creepy. It wasn't creepy. That's where I yeah, became yeah, yeah, confused. Yeah. Well, that's where their campaign was going, the Republicans, by calling him smear creepy. Smear campaign. Yeah, smear campaign, basically. So Viola Davis... As lesbian blues singer Ma Rainey, Ma Rainey is a highly anticipated Netflix film uh, called Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. That's based, what we saw in New York. Yes, no, we saw it in London. London, That's based yes, on yes. the August Wilson play. Davis plays the lesbian blues singer legend Mae Rainey. The movie will be released in December on Netflix. And I have a picture. They didn't have a... Um, trailer. They didn't have a trailer, but I do have a... A beautiful picture, and um, so you can take a look at that now. It was a great play. Yeah, it was a great play, and it should be a great movie, and mm -hmm. it's on Netflix, so everybody stay tuned for that. And then former U.S. Representative Katie Hill paid a high price for being a visible bisexual presence on Capitol Hill, yeah. so much so that she resigned her office, but she has to stop being an advocate for bi-visibility. Recently, bi-politician... I, a by politician did reach out to her for advice about coming out. Andrew Gillum, the former mayor of Tallahassee, Florida, he came out as bisexual in September. So Keith, I have a few more if we get to it, but if not, no, I took I took a little longer so I could go down through all of the okay. Vermont LGBTQ plus races so that people could get some additional information about who candidates were, what they were facing, and where they might put Good. support. Good. So let's move to Ann then, and she, okay. can, she can do a story. Or 
Okay, I can talk about Poland. Yes. I have spent a lot of time this morning reading about <laughs> all the developments in Poland, which are pretty bad in general. Um, on the ground, you know, as we know, there are a hundred LGBT, what they call LGBT, nearly a hundred local governments representing a third of Poland's territory declared themselves LGBT zones. Um, that, free zones. Oh, yes, thank you. Thanks. LGBT free zones. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to get my passport updated. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> Let's head out to Poland. A 2020 report um, estimates that the number of queer people under the age of 25 who attempt suicide increased mm. from 30% 30 per, 30 in 2016 to 45% in 2020. 84% of young LGBTQ people are now having suicidal thoughts. So mm. these... Uh, policies have an impact. Um, in April 2019, the ultra-conservative LGBT group Fundaha Pro drove a car around the city of uh, Gniezno, a Catholic stronghold in western Poland, reading uh, what the LGBT lobby wants to teach kids. Masturbation, consenting to sex, First sexual experiences and orgasm. Stop pedophilia. Since then, these cars and vans have become a common sight in big cities. Um, it's the most aggressive homophobic campaign I have seen in my life, said a lawyer for an LGBT group. Um, last year, this lawyer tried to sue Fundaha Pro for spreading false and homophobic content about the alleged link between pedophilia and homosexuality. The court ruled against it. So none of the city schools and public institutions, therefore, have spoken out against the group. Now, we may recall that on August 8th, 48 people were arrested, including Margot, who became a uh, poster child for LGBTQ resistance. Um, that particular episode has been described as the Polish Stonewall. Um, after her arrest, a uh, software developer named Linus Lewandowski um, saw um, he arrived at a scene at the scene of one of these vans and tried to cover up the banner um, with swirls of orange colored graffiti. It was filmed uh, by a reporter from, for a right wing channel and um, Lewandowski was arrested therefore. He was one of the 34 arrests, 48 arrested uh, during the protests after Margot's detention. She is a founding member of the queer activist group Stop the Bullshit, um, in English translation. Founded one year ago, its members organized dance events to block these vans, which some activists called homo buses, and information stalls on LGBTQ issues. More recently, they are the people who put the rainbow flags and anarchist symbols on statues in Warsaw, oh. which made the conservative government pretty angry. Many people believe that what the trucks say, be, many of the people believe what the trucks say because the local priests are saying it, the local politician is saying it, oh. and because there's no sex education in the schools. The attacks against LGBTQ communities have found themselves facing a new front um, involving these charters to um, these non-legally binding charters for to produce zones free of LGBTQ ideology. Um, there is a group, however, of these activists, including Margot, who took a queer tour and went to the southeastern city of Dabika 
and set up their stall. Police officers surrounded them and made them leave while the town's mayor told them their actions were illegal. So this queer tour goes to all these LGBT-free <laughs> zones and tries to talk to people. I mean, what an act of courage. Um, the Margot, um, also, the organization she heads got $80,000 in donations, but the bank won't release it to them. So they're really uh, up against it. Um, there was... Can banks do that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, we freeze assets of foreign governments all the time. The, yes. The Polish crowdfunding platform Zutka refuses to let the group withdraw the funds. So um, this writer recently spoke to Margot and her life partner, who's non-binary, and they said they're trying to back off because they have death threats and that they were going to a pizza party. And after they were going to go order pizza and go to a house party, but after the party, um, they were attacked and beaten up oh. by um, thugs. thugs. <laughs> so the morning after, um, they'd been assaulted twice after the party. Later that evening, um, the partner Lou had been attacked. The man had keys in his hands, so Lou had bruises and swelling. The situation is getting worse on many fronts in Poland, and the problems are really important to me, she said. So if it gets worse, I have this stupid mindset of I have to work harder because it's not enough. Many of my friends and I are in a situation where you physically can't do anything more. And in a related story, Poland is trying to spread its hate to other countries in Eastern Europe. Um, first of all, they've elected more right-wing people. They probably hired them from here. To the government. Um, and they've begun a push in the region to replace the Istanbul Convention with a family rights treaty. Uh, the Istanbul Convention is part of the um, EU's attempt to further LGBTQ and women's rights. But isn't the country like Poland kind of really still split? I mean, it was a close election. So it's not like they, they don't have any, I mean, they don't have any of the power support. But I imagine that, as far as people are concerned, since the election was so close, that there must be, you know, some support there for for, for these Polish LGBTQ people. Well, there is resistance, yeah. and um, but they're showing up, you know, in the government. More and more right-wing people are being put in place. But this gives me an opportunity to speak of the European Union and to show this picture of the supporters in the European Union um, who are posing on September 30th. They're um, posing in front of the European Union headquarters in support of the um, LGBTQ people in Poland. But uh, Poland has elicited three governments in the region, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Slovenia, uh, Poland has invited them to join them in an effort to create... Join you know, their hate groups. <laughs> mm -hmm, their alternative convention to the Istanbul Convention. And um, the Istanbul Convention is very forward-looking, feminist, pro-LGBTQ. So. All right. And every time I do an Eastern European story... I look up and see who's in the European Union. <laughs> oh, that's and good. And all of these member countries, all these are member countries of oh. the European Union. Well, they should get rid of them. Um, if they can't follow the rules, right? And, they well, should the other just countries throw them haven't, out. The other countries haven't committed, though. Okay. Slovenia, Slovakia, and the Czech Republic. Well, we'll see what they do. You'll keep us posted, I'm oh, sure. Oh, of course I will. I just have a couple of, one quick thing, that, well, two, actually. Just quick things I wanted to get out before we leave. Atlanta has an out LGBT film festival uh, at Queer Cinema, and this year is the first year the festival is Oscar qualified. There are 24 narrative films, 15 documentaries, 15 short films, 27 countries are represented, 
And you can check out the full slate of films, get your pens ready, at State of Films and Programs online as Films, Arts, Entertainment, Georgia. So I think, you know, that and, and you know, having them be qualified for the uh, Oscar is pretty good. And um, one last quick thing, um, Lambda Legal um, is worried about marriage equality since Thomas and Alito are already creating a laundry list of things they'd like to get rid of. And with this new justice coming on, they should have it in the bag. So. And they've already made comments that they think that it was not the right decision. Right, so. right, exactly. So on that yeah. cheery note. Talking about the Republican Party, 1986, Vermont Republican Party, their platform, they withdrew the support for the Equal Rights Amendment. <sighs> they put out an alternative proposal instead of equal rights using the term equal <laughs> protections. And rather than using the word sex, gender, what were because, they afraid of? Because they wanted to make it clear that the platy, party platform does not include support of gay rights. The only people who will profit from the ERA's passage, we can only assume, are the homosexuals and lesbians. <laughs> We're well, in a there different we category. Go. There we go. Well, in sight, in uh, you know, all that's been going on this week with the president and everything else, uh, hang in there, folks, and always remember resist. to resist.